units cover more battle space than they used to. They have more firepower. They can go further. Um, and they're better protected from the infantrymen all the way through to larger units. But that increase in capability has come at a cost on the energy, on the fuel, on the battery side of the house that we haven't entirely kept up with. Operation Reach 2015 is an important war game because it allows the Navy and the Marine Corps to explore new operational concepts and while exploring those concepts, evaluate what the impact on energy consumption is. We've gotten heavier and our equipment is a lot more energy intensive. With Expeditionary Force 21, we're talking about a greater dispersion of forces. And that dispersion means the distribution networks are expanded a great deal more as well. That 45% increase in energy requirement for the Marine Expeditionary Brigade is significant and can potentially impact forcible entry operations and other significant combat operations. The focus has changed on becoming uh, more lethal and to be able to execute distributed operations. So along with those concepts, again, the underlying theme is, is that um, can you sustain that capability over time? Operational Reach uh, 15, and the reason why we're doing that is this is the first time that we're looking at uh, the EF-21 capstone concept, uh, which the Marine Corps uh, you know, advertises as its capability uh, to the Joint Force. And this is the first time we're really looking at uh, what our uh, limitations and capabilities are with regard to energy on the battlefield. We are fighting a scenario where, you know, Marines are conducting forcible entry operations from the sea in, th in an anti-access area denial environment using distributed forces on the battlefield and aggregating forces and support on the battlefield at the time and place of our choosing. One of the things that confounds this, this challenge and makes it more difficult is uh, some of the new weapon systems that we anticipate that our adversaries are going to have. Those anti-access area denial systems make it so that the joint force is going to be pushed further away from, from an adversary's shores. And yet we still are going to have to have the ability to be able to project power through that, that area, that denied area, and into the battle space of an adversary. So we are focused on working with the Navy Marine Corps team together and looking at where we experience risks together. We're also looking at identifying capabilities that may mitigate some of those increased energy requirements in the Marine Expeditionary Brigade and frankly across the Naval Force. And we want to make sure that as we're building the future amphibious fleet, that it meets both Naval and Marine Corps requirements um, and ability to project operational forces wherever we need to, whenever we need to. The analysis that we are doing is not strictly Marine Corps focused, it's Naval force focused. It's not the Marine Expeditionary Brigade only, it's also the Expeditionary Strike Group and the Carrier Strike Group. It, it's based on the fact that we are more energy intensive but as F-35 comes online for the Navy and the new DDG comes online for the Navy, the new destroyer, they're also more energy intensive. And so the question is, what is the aggregate impact of both increased energy requirements in the carrier strike group and the expeditionary strike group and the MEB on the entire joint fighting force?